This is the statement that I want to make. This is the claim, the, the main thesis of what I've been doing for the last decade. And this is a powerful statement, but I believe that the evidence will back it up. Evidence coming not only of our, from our own laboratory, but other laboratories around the world who have been take, building upon our work and extending it and replicating it to various other populations in various other ways. That gratitude has a power. Power to do what? Gratitude, I believe, has the power to do three things, to heal to energize and to change lives. In fact, people do report a healing power to gratefulness, that it can heal them of past hurts as well as give them hope and inspiration for the future. People report that it can change their lives, that it represents in many cases a turning of the mind to focus not on what, which one is lacking or deprived of, but which one has already. All right, so the definition of gratitude I want to share with you is very short, very simple, but it consists of two components. Number one, it's an affirmation of goodness. We affirm that there are good things, benefits, gifts, that life is good. It doesn't mean that life is perfect, that there are not some um, complaints, some burdens, some hassles of living uh, as well. But all in all, as we look at our life as a whole, if we look at life accurately, we can identify a number of good things or some amount of goodness in our life. That's one step. Second step, though, is figuring out where that goodness comes from. We make an attribution, psychologists would say. We make a causal decision, inference. Where does this good stuff come from? Who do I give thanks to if I am thankful? Almost implies, doesn't it, a, a giver behind that gift. There's someone to give thanks to. Okay? And so we acknowledge or recognize the sources of this goodness are outside of ourselves. It wasn't anything that we necessarily did ourselves which we might take pride in, let's say, or, or be happy, proud of something that we did. But in a, in, a, in a humble dependence, we acknowledge that other people did things for us. Or if you are of a spiritual uh, mindset, you might attribute that to God or to a higher power, to a supernatural being, and say that there are other, other forces that provided this benefit for me, did for me what I could not do for myself, in which I recognize uh, a dependence, and I am grateful for that gift that I have received. Now, there's a distinction between feeling grateful, the short-term feeling, emotion of gratitude you might feel when you're given a gift, for instance, someone provides you with a benefit, you feel thankful, and that can be a very powerful feeling. I don't want to minimize that one. But there's a difference between that short-term feeling and saying that someone is a grateful person, that they habitually look at life from a, a grateful focus or through gratitude glasses. That's very different, I think. So we could we could align levels of gratitude on a continuum from the habit of saying thank you to a more a, a deeper abiding sense of thankfulness for life as a fundamental life orientation. That's a different level of uh, a degree of gratitude. So gratitude has complexity, it has depth to it. And the more I study it and, and read about it and talk to people, the more I appreciate that it's not a simple just being appreciative or being thankful, that there are many nuances and complexities to gratitude. And we're not creating grateful people through these experiments. We want to, though, try to, I mean, I think that would be the ultimate goal, is to uh, help individuals develop gratitude more as a deeper orientation, as an attitude toward life, just because of those benefits that it seems to provide. What is a grateful person, you might say? Well, a grateful person is one who is able to receive, right, gifts that, that other people are providing for them, or life itself uh, as a gift. The grateful person at this other extreme end of this continuum of gratefulness is one who accepts all of life, good and bad. Everything that happens, they see it as a gift or potential gift. That's what the grateful person is. Now, that's quite a bit different from journaling about all the nice things happening to you, but uh, you have to start somewhere. Right? And we wouldn't assume that, that uh, all people find it very easy to keep a journal or to even think in a grateful framework because of some reason I'll talk about shortly, some of the obstacles to gratitude which seem so much easier and so much more automatic and habitual than grateful thinking. We've developed ways to measure trait gratitude, dispositional gratitude, a very nice short six-item questionnaire we've used in a number of studies where we can identify more grateful 
and less grateful people. And we find, much like our intervention studies, that grateful people have advantages when it comes to success in life, that they tend to be happier, tend to be more satisfied. But they also are tended to be doing good things as well. It's not just feeling good that gratitude uh, produces positive feelings, but also leads to doing good, leads to acts of generosity, to compassion. Grateful people are more forgiving. Grateful people are more pro-social. Uh, they're helping other, and people are saying this about them. It's not just them saying this about themselves. In our studies with their intervention, what we find when we, we sent surveys, questionnaires to spouses, roommates, partners, people who knew these participants well, and we asked them to rate how helpful uh, has, you know, Henry been in the last week or so, and how, how much has they offered to, you know, take out the trash and all these things. And what they say is that they become, something's happened. I don't know what happened to Henry, but uh, keep doing whatever you're doing because he's a new person. He's changed now. He's become more outgoing, helpful, uh, generous, charitable, uh, and so on. And so we're finding this with grateful people as well as short-term increases in gratitude. Well, I think that grateful and ungrateful people have different ways of looking at life. It's, it's very hard, by the way, to find people who are very ungrateful. In fact, if you look, th again, throughout the history of ideas, you see ingratitude being excoriated as a, as a vice. You know, it's one of the worst things people can say about you, that you're an ungrateful person. In some cases, it really represents sociopathy or antisocial behavior because reciprocity is such a universal norm that when people do good things for us, we do good things in return. We don't return harm for good. And so it's unusual to find an ungrateful person, but there are ones who are less grateful who have a different orientation toward life. For various reasons, they're going to focus more on what life is denying, what life is, um, uh, what they're losing out on, looking at life from a lens of scarcity versus a lens of abundance looking in terms of a burden. Life is a burden. Um, focusing on deprivations, resentments, versus life is a gift. Uh, satisfaction, what life is offering. Very different orientations. Of course, these are uh, uh, extreme, and many people fall in between. And even the most grateful people have times where they feel you know, deprived and, and so forth and, and feel injustices are committed against them. But in general, we're talking about two extremes. They're the most grateful and the least grateful individuals. And I think part of the reason why we see the positive effects of gratitude is because on the left, we have this different orientation toward looking at oneself, looking at other people, looking at the world, a positive triad, which leads to, in general, more functional, positive outcomes. <laughs>